Listen, all this hugging and shit is nothing. K1, stand up fight, real knockout. What's up, you fucking bozos? This is Bloodstain Lane, aka 187 on you 666s. And uh, this video is going to be a little preview of the upcoming K1 Rising 2012 card taking place May 27th in Madrid, Spain. And first off, just let me say this I am absolutely fucking grateful and thankful that K1 is back. You know, we didn't have it for 2010, there was problems with FEG, you know, they're under new management now. And like I said previously, K1 by far puts on my favorite shows, any combat sport, period. Um, so I'm very, very excited. Uh, there's a lot of star power on this card. Uh, this is the K1 Max 16-man uh, uh, tournament with some super fights uh, in between. So we're going to break down the card fight by fight. Uh, first fight of the fucking night that we're going to talk about. And you know you know, I got to talk about it. Uh is Bada Harry making his return to K1, fighting Anderson Braddock Silva. Now, before I actually talk about this fight, uh, you know, if you've been keeping up with the Bada Harry saga, you know, after the fight with Golkan Saki at, on in Showtime, I think it was in in January, he announced his retirement from the sport of kickboxing and was going to go into boxing and train in uh, Philly with Nazim Richardson, le legendary trainer of Sugar Shane Mosley, Bernard Hopkins, and a whole bunch of other guys. Well, it turned out, you know, Bada Harry ended up moving to New York. Uh, you know, he was taking the train to Philly every day to train with Nazem. I've actually hung out with Bada on, uh, on a couple of occasions, which was definitely um, a very great moment in my life because Bada is just an amazing, amazing human being. Um, I got nothing but great things to say about him. Uh, treated me like I was a, a friend that he known for years. Took me out to dinner twice. He even bought me a tracksuit at Models. Great, great guy. Um, and, uh, I, you know, by hanging out with him, I never thought that he would go back into kickboxing. I, he looked like he was very thrilled with training with Nazim and uh, very excited about his upcoming boxing career and what he wanted to prove out there to everybody. So this was a little bit of a shocker, him coming back to K1. Now, am I disappointed by it? Absolutely fucking not. First off, I just like seeing Bada Harry fight Period. I don't give a fuck if it's boxing, kickboxing. Shit, I'll fucking watch Bada Harry fight a fucking cashier at White Castle. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I just like seeing the guy fight. And frankly, you know, I was a little disappointed at first when he was leaving boxing. But at the same time, he has a lot more to do in the world of kickboxing. Now, from what I heard, he's not done with, you know, boxing. He's going to go back in boxing. He's going to do, do both. But, uh, you know, let's just keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, word on the street, I don't know how true it is, I, you know, I have a source that says Nazim Richardson might actually come out to Spain and corner Bada Harry along with Mike Passanier for this fight against Anderson Braddock Silva. Now, uh, we all know what Bada Harry is. He's the most talented kickboxer in the world. Probably one of the most, probably the most talented fighter in the world, period. Um, devastating, devastating knockout power in both hands. Vicious kicks extremely, extremely fucking violent. I mean, this is a guy, one thing about Bada, and after talking to him, this is a guy who, you know, a lot of these fighters or athletes, they want to just compete and, and, and compete in the sport. Bada is a very violent guy. Bada wants to, inf he, he, he takes pleasure out of knocking motherfuckers out and inflicting pain on motherfuckers. Like I said in my, my Bada Harry, uh, uh, my America Meets Bada Harry video, Bada Harry doesn't like you, he doesn't like your, your brother, your sister, your mother, your grandmother, your orthodontist, your fucking chiropractor, your fucking next door neighbor, fucking uh, Johnny. He don't like none of you motherfuckers. He wants to go out there and eliminate all of you. And that's what separates Bada from most fighters in the fucking world. He takes pleasure out of fucking inflicting pain on people. 
And uh, like I said, just so so skilled and athletic. Anderson Braddock Silver, on the hand, is you know a very tough Brazilian fighter. Uh, trains out of uh, the legendary Chakariki gym. Uh, just a very good kickboxer overall. Very, very good left hook, good body shots, uh, great Brazilian kick. Never been knocked out in his career. That's about to change in this fucking fight. Bada Harry will knock out Anderson Braddock Silva in round one in Bada Harry's return fight to K1. And you know what? Bring on the fucking UFC version of Anderson Silva too, because that motherfucker's getting knocked out in the first round too before Bada Harry in the kick moxie match. Drop dead, motherfucker. Next fight of the night, we got Mirko Krokop versus Lauren Javier Jorge. Now, everybody knows I'm a huge, huge Krokop fan, been, been for a long time. Um, this is actually Krokop's second kickboxing fight this year. Uh, this, this, the first one was against Ray Sefo, which wasn't the best best fight. But, you know, nonetheless, it was his first fight, first kickboxing fight in nine years since he TKO'd Bob Sapp in K1 in 2003. Uh, that being said, Mirko Krokop's not the same fighter he used to be. We all fucking know that. Uh, he doesn't have the explosiveness anymore. doesn't really have a lot of the stuff that he used to possess. That being said, he's still a very he has a very high IQ in the ring, very smart, very crafty. He's a veteran. Um, Lauren Javier Jorge, on the other hand, is a very tough, well-rounded Spaniard kickboxer. Always coming forward, possesses a mean, mean right cross and a very good spinning roundhouse kick. Um, tough as nails, pushed Tyrone Spong to the edge when he when he fought him last year. Um, and I, I like. You know, I'm trying not to think biasly here, but I am, you know, a biased fan. Uh, more than likely, Javier Jorge is probably going to win this fight just based on the fact he's been doing kickboxing a lot more longer than Krokop has done in the last, you know, <laughs> nine years. Krokop has been doing MMA. Um, Kro for, in order for Krokop to win this fucking fight, he's going to have to keep going right to avoid the right cross. Throw a lot of straight lefts down the pike, some 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 left uh, roundhouse kicks to the body, that maybe a head kick every now and then. Um, I'm gonna pick Crow Cop to win a decision just based on me being a biased fan, but more than likely he probably won't win this fight. So don't be you know all you Crow Cop fans out there, don't be you know too down if he loses because Javier Jorge is a very good. Next fight of the night we got 2012. It's Showtime champion Daniel Gita versus K1 vet Paul Slawinski. Now. I mean, what is there to say about Daniel Gita? The guy's a six foot five, two hundred and fifty pound Romanian monster. Best low kicks in the fucking world. Okay? Like I said in the previous video, his low kicks, just picture fucking Mark McGuire all juiced up, swinging a Louisville slugger at your fucking legs. That's Daniel Gita's fucking leg kicks. Couple that with knockout power in both hands and an iron chin, and you got one of the top two heavyweight kickboxers in the fucking planet. Uh KO'd his last five opponents, all highlight-worthy knockouts. I mean, the guy's just on an absolute tear. One of the hottest fighters in the world right now. Paul Slowinski, on the hands of vet, been around for, for, for a very long time, over a decade. And he's been on a tear himself lately. Uh, he, won his, he won his last nine fights all by knockout. That being said, Daniel Geet is too good, too skilled, too much of a monster right now for Paul Slowinski to even give him a fight. I expect Daniel Gita to, to get a knockout sometime in the second round. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, later this year, we can see Bada Harry versus Daniel Gita, two of the best kickboxers in the planet, two of the best stand-up fighters in the world, period, going head-to-head, -head, toe toe-to-toe, other than Mayweather-Pacquiao, my most anticipated fucking fight that I want to see this year. Next fight of the night, we got Rico Verhoeven versus Sergey Leshenko. Rico's a six foot five, two hundred and fifty pound Dutch moose. Very, very strong legs. Uh, likes to work in close with body work and low kicks. Uh, he has a pretty good chin. Only been stopped twice in his career. Uh, Sergey Leshenko is a six foot three, two hundred forty five pound uh, fi uh, Ukrainian fighter training out of the legendary Mike's gym under Mike Passanier. He's a two thousand eleven su uh, Super Combat Grand Prix champion. And uh, this fight. I, I, I mean, it could go either way. To me, this fight's 50-50. Um, Sergey's strength is uh, his hands by far. He has very quick and powerful hands. Uh, nice blend of speed and power. He needs to utilize his jab in this fight to keep Rico, uh, um, you know, from keeping Rico from fighting his game. I'm going to pick Sergey Lyshenko to win this fight uh, by decision. Next fight of the night, we got one of my favorite fighters, period, in the world, Masaba Rani versus Ibn Diaz. 
you know, Masab's a Moroccan uh, uh, Dutch kickboxer fights out of the legendary Musi gym. A uh, very action-packed fight. It has it all. Speed, power, excitement, flying needs, great uh, uh, great left hand, great right hand, body work, low kicks. He's a complete, complete kickboxer, but fights very fast-paced and fights, you know, very action-packed. Zeman Diaz, the other hand, is a, a fighter from Spain. Very explosive fighter himself. Uh, uh, has a really quick twitch in his foot. So I'm expecting a very, very high octane, high intense fight, similar to the Muhammad uh, Kamal Musab fight in 2010, which, in my opinion, was top two fights of the year that year. So expect a, a really, really fast, fun fight in this one. Picking uh, Musab Rani to win this fight by decision. Going to go through the 16 man uh, K1 Max Grand Tournament real, real fast. Uh, first fight, we got the rematch between Mike Zambides versus Shahid El Hodges, one of the greatest combat sports fights you've ever seen in your whole life. Um, uh, Zambo is a legend in the sport, and you know what makes him even more of a legend? Just the, 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 he's just a small guy who just went out there and fights with nothing but heart. Uh, in my opinion, he was robbed in the last K1 tournament against Georgio Petrosian. That's a whole different story. Uh, Chahida Aj, one of the most uh, action-packed fighters in K1 today. Um, I'm expecting another classic between these two guys. Just stylistically, it's going to happen. I'm going to pick Zambo to win the rematch again, though. Um, Going next fight of the night is between K1 S Cup legend Andy Sauer versus Abraham Rokesi. Now, if you don't know who Andy Sauer is, do me a favor, light a cigarette, okay, and then just burn it out on your cheek because you're a piece of shit if you don't know who Andy Sauer is. Um, this is actually the second time these guys are fighting. Andy Sauer was robbed in the first fight uh, in Spain. Uh, Abraham Rokesi is a Spaniard fighter. And uh, like I said, Andy Sauer was absolutely robbed. Uh, uh, Abraham definitely got the hometown decision in that one. Uh, Abraham's a pretty good fight. There's really nothing really special about him. Sauer, obviously, you know, the combinations, the leg the low kicks, one of the all-time greats in the sport. Um, I expect Andy Sauer to definitely win the rematch in this one and advance into the, into the, into the final eight. Ne next fight of the night is Arthur Kashenko versus Su Wan Lee. Uh, Arthur Kashenko is arguably one of the top three max fighters in the world right now, along with Giorgio Petrosian. And Robin Van Roosmalen, uh, also training out of the legendary Mike's gym under Mike Passanier. And, and since he's been to that gym, he's taken his game to a whole fucking other level. One of the most exciting fighters in the world today. The, the flying knees, the the, the, the the combination punch and the kicks. Just a real, real fun fighter to watch. Uh, Su Wan Lee is way out of his league here. Uh, this is just uh, an appetizer for Kashenko to beat up on. I expect Kashenko to get a knockout in the second round. Next fight, we have Chinese kickboxer Su Wan versus Japanese kickboxer Yashihiro Kido. Uh, Su Wan is a tall, lanky fighter. Pretty good punching power. Uh, could definitely brawl when it when the time comes. I expect him to get a knockout against Kido here. I'm going to run down these rest of these fights real quick since we're running out of time. We got Gago Drago versus Andy Ristic. Gago Drago, a K1 vet, one of the most action-packed fighters fighting today, versus Andy Ristic, a Surinamese kickboxer, a fast-rising superstar. Um, Gago Drago's lost seven in a row. I don't figure he's going to get on a winning streak now against the young gun Andy Ristic, who has a height and reach advantage. I uh, expect Ristic to get a knockout sometime in the third. Eugene Nishiro versus Reese McAllister. Reese McAllister is a British uh, Muay Thai fighter fighting Eugene Nishiro. A southpaw Japanese kickboxer. I'm going to pick McAllister to win this fight uh, by decision. Uh, one of my favorite fighters fighting today, period. Another Mike Shim representative, Mirtha Gronhart versus Harut Gregorian, which is probably the most competitive fight of the night. Uh, both guys are really, really good fighters. Gronhart coming down in weight. If Gronhart could bring his power down to the lower weight class, he, like I said, he's going to sleep it to win this whole tournament. I'm picking him to beat Gregorian in this fight uh, by decision. And uh, also, Chris Nagimbi, the African assassin versus Long Hern, Super, Ho Super Pro Sam uh, Samu. Chris Nagimbi, one of the most fun fighters today. Best flying knee in the fucking game, fighting Long Hern, traditional Muay Thai fighter. Uh, I'm going to pick Nagimbi to win this fight just based on the fact he has more experience with K1 uh, fighting rules. Um, but I'm looking forward to more fights from Long Hern in the future. Uh, and like I said, K1, real stand-up fights, real knockouts, bus stay lane, team takeover. Respect the fucking shooter. 